Um, my talk today will uh, be about the potential value of uh, biomarker in heart failure. So uh, the chronology of the presentation uh, will be as follows. In the first part, I will give uh, a general <coughs> definition of biomarker and uh, I will um, uh, describe uh, the characteristic of the ideal biomarker. And in the second part, uh, I will uh, explain the relation uh, of biomarker to to the pathophysiology of uh, heart failure and uh, the influence on the management of uh, the heart failure. And the third, par third part will be current and novel uh, biomarkers. Um, the biomarkers are measurable and quantifiable biological parameters uh, which serve as indices for health and physiology assessments for both diagnostic and risk stratification purposes. Uh, biomarkers uh, include a variety of um, product uh, uh, such as small uh, uh, biochemical substances and uh, to the molecular and the macromolecule uh, entities as well as microparticles. <coughs> uh, just to give you brief ideas about uh, the microparticles, so microparticles are small membrane vesicles that are released from different cell types, uh, such as platelets, endothelial cells, and, and others. And microparticles circulate freely in the bloodstream, and uh, they could contain certain membrane receptors, as well as other proteins and nucleic acids, which are inherent in the parental cells. Uh, microparticle formation is very complex, and uh, involve uh, a uh, <coughs> complex uh, cascade signal, uh, signal, signal, signalization and uh, actually it's well uh, uh, accepted today that uh, uh, microparticle formation occurs uh, via two uh, uh, primarily uh, pathways which are uh, cell activation and apoptosis so uh, both uh, pathways uh, lead to the uh, disruption of the cytoskeleton and the blebbing of the plasma membrane and uh, uh, consequently the formation of uh, microparticles. So, uh, what is an ideal biomarker? Uh, what are the characteristics actually of an ideal biomarker? Um, there is a general uh, or there is uh, some criteria that have uh, been outlined for uh, defining a good biomarkers and based on this criteria uh, an ideal biomarker should be uh, available and easy to measure and uh, should uh, have a defined release of kinetic and most importantly it uh, should uh, answer a specific question in heart failure like the prediction diagnosis severity and prognosis of the disease and uh, an ideal biomarker should be high sensitive and very specific and should be truly validated before its uh, clinical uh, use and of course it should be uh, cost effective uh, heart failure is uh, end stage of uh, numerous uh, cardiac uh, disease and uh, is characterized by the inability of the of the heart uh, to to meet the uh, the uh, metabolic and uh, uh, the demand of, of the body and um, the uh, heart failure could be uh, acute or chronic and uh, patient with acute uh, heart failure syndrome can be uh, classified into uh, three different categories. Uh, for example, for example, the patient with the novo acute uh, heart failure present uh, with the first uh, clinical symptoms of heart failure uh, without the existence of uh, a, a heart failure previously. And um, in general, the the novo acute heart failure is secondary to an acute coronary syndromes. And uh, the second uh, category is acute uh, deterioration in chronic heart failure, which is rapid worsening of uh, pre-existing heart failure. And the third category is acute resistant heart failure, which is an advanced stage of heart failure that I will not uh, talk about it uh, since uh, Dr. Kirchner had given us an excellent talk about uh, the, the intermite history. And uh, let's see uh, what is the relation 
to uh, so what is the uh, relation to patriot ideology in in accurate heart failure so uh, as you can as you can see here in uh, in this cartoon uh, accurate heart failure is a, a systemic illness which uh, uh, put together and involve uh, a, um, a large uh, number of organ and organ system in the body uh, for example we uh, we can we could have uh, biomarkers that is released from uh, the renal system, oh, the renal system, uh, the cardiovascular system, the uh, vascular bed, as well as the neuro uh, uh, endocrine system, and also we can have biomarkers that are released from organs that are involved in the inflammatory reaction. So um, uh, actually, the uh, low cardiac output uh, uh, triggered by bar heart, bar heart failure will. <coughs> will uh, lead to a uh, the decrease in, uh, in blood volume and uh, this decrease actually will uh, activate the uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone uh, signaling cascade and also will activate the adrenergic and inflammatory uh, reaction which will all work together to increase uh, blood volume. So. Um, Despite the fact that uh, heart, uh, heart failure or different type of heart failure have uh, different uh, underlying uh, molecular me mechanism in the pathogenesis of heart failure, it's, uh, it's too difficult and it's challenging to really distinguish between the different type of heart failure in, in the clinic and uh, laboratory and the clinical test lakes the sensitivity and the specificity, specificity to, distang to distinguish between the different uh, type of, uh, of heart failure and uh, given the advent of uh, new uh, um, guided uh, therapy and, and the need to improve the clinical outcome and, uh, and uh, to uh, improve the clinical management of, uh, of heart failure uh, it is uh, of utmost importance to uh, <coughs> to really make the the, uh, the the difference or to distinguish between the different uh, type of uh, heart failure, and this actually could be done uh, by the use of uh, uh, biomarkers, uh, which uh, can uh, actually uh, have a potential uh, value in distinguishing between the different type of heart failure. For example, uh, to the occurrence of a de novo heart failure uh, after uh, an ACS. <coughs> uh, similar to acute heart failure, uh, chronic heart failure as well is a uh, systemic, uh, uh, a multi-systemic disease that uh, put together a, uh, different uh, organs and organ systems. Uh, like uh, the uh, renal system, the myocardial uh, factor, and the uh, neuroendocrine uh, activation. And uh, the combination of this uh, molecular uh, mechanism will allow for, uh, for biomarkers to provide uh, the kind of molecular fingerprint uh, that will be complementary to the clinical uh, assessment. Um, we, uh, we all know that um, the um, heart failure is uh, characterized or is associated with uh, cardiac uh, remodeling uh, and ventricle remodeling which will uh, affect the uh, function of, of, uh, of the ventricle and uh, the uh, capacity of the heart to, to eject uh, the blood. And uh, this cardiac remodeling is actually uh, med mediated by the extracellular matrix turnover, and uh, specifically, uh, we can uh, measure uh, the serum marker of uh, some biomarkers that are related to to collagen synthesis or collagen degradation. Uh, for example, we can um, here we can use the uh, the P three and P, which is a biomarker of uh, collagen synthesis, and uh, to measure. The survival, uh, the survival rate in, in a group of patients uh, affected by 
uh, heart failure and uh, uh, the uh, Kaplan Mayer uh, curve uh, show, showed clearly that uh, it, uh, the level of uh, P3 and P that are uh, greater than uh, 3.85 microgram per liter uh, is related to a significant decrease in the survival rate in patients uh, affected with heart failure with time. And uh, another study ha uh, has looked to the level of endothelial microparticles uh, which are released by, uh, by the endothelium in, in heart failure and uh, authors found that uh, in the group of patients uh, affected by heart failure, the level of uh, endothelial microparticle is significantly increased compared to a healthy subject. And this, agree, uh, this increase is related actually or it's proportional to the severity of the disease. Uh, also, the level of uh, endothelial microparticle uh, has been used uh, to, um, to calculate the uh, cumulative event-free uh, probability in, uh, in two groups of patients. And uh, uh, the authors found that a high level of endothelial microparticle is um, or, uh, the patient who has a high level of uh, endothelial micro microparticle in their blood have more chance to develop a cardiovascular event uh, with time and uh, which is uh, more than the people who or the patient who have a low uh, EMP uh, level. Uh, this is actually a summary of uh, the potential biomarker uh, in chronic heart failure, the prognostic value of, um, of uh, uh, collection of these uh, biomarkers, which uh, showed clearly that uh, the, the fourth quartile of, uh, of uh, biomarker value uh, shows a, a important decrease in the event-free survival in patient over time, were more than the first or second or third quarter, and the first quarter represent actually a high value of uh, the biomarkers. So um, the advent of, of uh, biomarker technology uh, opened uh, the window for the development of a strategy for biomarker guided therapy and. Um, we know actually that uh, the pathophysiology uh, of heart failure uh, is uh, triggered by molecular underlying molecular mechanism that could be now uh, measured by biomarkers. And uh, this actually, uh, this option will uh, significantly increase our understanding of the of the patho pathophysiology of heart failure and will impact positively on the way or on the management of, of heart failure and it will uh, actually have also a positive impact on the, uh, the, the, the uh, length of hospitalization uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the hospital. <coughs> this is an example actually of uh, uh, the importance uh, of uh, biomarkers uh, in, in, uh, in different uh, clinical study, as we can see here for the <coughs> natriuretic uh, peptide, uh, it has been successfully used in, uh, in a clinical study to diagnose and to stratify the risk and uh, of, of uh, acute heart failure, as well as in a biomarker-guided uh, treatment as well as for others, uh, important biomarkers such as the pro-calcitonin and GAD and, and others. And uh, this study shows uh, actually uh, the uh, benefit of using the anti-pro uh, B and B guided therapy in two different uh, categories of patients. The first category of patients uh, were subjected to a therapy that is guided by the anti pro-BNP uh, biomarker, whereas the second uh, category of patients uh, were subjected to a, <coughs> sorry, to a standard of care strategy. And uh, the Kaplan-Meier uh, uh, cure shows clearly that uh, the patient 
who were uh, enrolled in the uh, NP Pro BNB guided therapy um, have a greater uh, event free survival over time uh, than the patients who were uh, enrolled in a uh, therapy guided by standard of care. Uh, clinically, the echo, uh, echo uh, cardiogram show that uh, the structural and uh, functional changes uh, in uh, this uh, two category of patient was uh, quite different uh, and we can see here that the left ventricle uh, ejection fraction in the uh, anti pro uh, uh, patient was significantly higher than uh, the group of uh, patients who were subjected to a standard uh, uh, care and uh, as well the the left ventricle and systolic and, uh, and also and diastolic volume uh, index were uh, also significantly uh, ameliorated and improved in uh, the category of uh, patient uh, enrolled in the NP Pro BNB uh, strategy. Uh, so um, the biomarkers are extremely valuable at different stage of heart failure and they, the, the, the influence on management is still evolving and uh, novel biomarkers are very promising in the management of heart failure. Thank you very much.